Hello and welcome back my partners in crime. Welcome back to Murder Analyze for our case 17 of our, you know, this missing persons campaign that we're doing to highlight the missing from all over the world and around all different places, different ages, different people, men, women, children. Now this case is from Ireland and this case is the disappearance of Philip Cairns. Now, um, Garda police or the police um, in Ireland ha have renewed their appeal for information on missing person case involving a Dublin schoolboy who vanished without a trace over way over 35 years ago. Um, the 13 year old Philip Cairns remains one of the most um, high profile missing persons cases in Ireland to date. It's really, this. they haven't stopped, this case is still open, people are still looking, people still want information, this family still needs answers. So come on, this is a very, very sad case. You know, another kid disappeared without a bloody trace. I mean, gosh, it's just terrible, isn't it? I just do these cases and I think sometimes, uh, it's just, I just think another one, you know. So please, if you know anything, listen to this case. If you know anything, say something, really. So anyway, this um, he disappeared on the afternoon of October 23rd, 1986. And he was walking home from school, um, and it's in uh, south of Dublin. I'll put up everywhere. I'm not even going to try and say the names of it, but I'll put up slides of all the different names and the things where you can see. But south Dublin, and it was 1986 case, and it was the 23rd of October that this boy just disappeared without a trace. So this case, listen, is baffling, isn't it? You know, really, the police are baffled, the guard of police are baffled, they, everything, the family doesn't understand it, no one really understands it. This kid is not a runaway, so I think we can clear that right up, right from the off. He's not a, not a runaway, but from that day, he has never been seen since. So what the investigations are trying to do is track, really, what happened to him in any way at that time. Now, this case has been really highlighted everywhere and will continue to be highlighted until someone really is prosecuted for this boy because they have said and I think it's obvious isn't it from the amount of time he's gone missing and there has been no sight or sound of him since that this boy was probably murdered um you know this is probably an abduction and murder so we would be now looking for a body and I think the, the police and the guard police have been looking for bodies for quite some time um digging up different places in relation to this case but it's just you know you know, I think when when you read about the family, you know, they, they you know, what they they sort of aren't, their questions are: what sort of person would do this to someone? They believe it's someone that he may have known or local to that area. They do believe that, but I don't think you can rule anything out here when you have an abduction uh, or you know maybe a suspected abduction and murder of a child. You, I don't think you can rule out anything. So I think if you know anything or you know. Um, please come forward and say it. So anyway, Philip, he was born on the 1st of September 1973 and he disappeared on the afternoon of the 23rd of October 1986 while walking back to school in South Dublin, Ireland. Now the 13-year-old schoolboy had left his home in Ballyroon. Uh, I'll put it all up because I probably got it wrong. On that afternoon, um, and he had not been seen since. Now, he there was this large-scale investigation that was carried out and literally there was no trace of him this boy has just never been seen of again since now when i show you the photos of the alleyway and his housing so i would have sure i would have thought that someone would have seen something but they didn't so listen this case has been recategorized hasn't it over the years and now it is recategorized i think as um, this high profile child um murder case and really, as they said, it's the only similar murder being to the Robert um, Houlihan murder in January 2005. And I'm going to take a look at that case. That's a different case. Um, but it's one of the most high profile disappearances in recent history of Ireland. So, you know, you can, you know, do we think that this boy still could be in Ireland somewhere? Yes. Is it possible that he could have been took over borders or across the sea into England? Yes, it is. It really is. Do I think that's probable? No, I think he's probably with still in with that area. He's, I don't think he would have been moved out of Ireland, but in them day, you know, 1986, it could have been. He really could have been. Now, Philip's family have 
issued really numerous uh, appeals for information about this. A reconstruction took place in 2007 and it was later televised on the RTE one while um, a reward of 10,000 euros had been offered but no one has ever been arrested with this case and it still to this day remains open. I don't think this case will ever be closed. Um, the sort of timeline of, of Philip was he'd gone to school in the morning, right? Everything's fine, he'd just gone to school. But a lot of kids, including my kids when they were younger and especially in 1986, used to come home for lunch. I used to come home for lunch, I bet many of you did, you know. You know, if you couldn't afford, you know, your lunch meals or whatever at school. My mum used to say, we only lived down the road from the school. Come home, she'd make us something to eat. At least she knew we was getting fed, she said. So it's not, you know, nothing wrong in, in 1986 for this boy to be coming home from school in the afternoon to get something to eat. He'd have his lunch, then he'd walk back to school because in them days you were allowed to do that. That's what we did. In 1986 and beyond that but the problem is what happened with Philip is yes he'd come home and everything and I think he's um, I think he departed his school at about 12.45 and um, that was it he had something to eat he left his home at 1.30 to return back to the school never returned that was it he was gone so his family have stated from that sort of quickness and someone that maybe knew known his routine that he had been coming home you know at, from school each day to have his lunch that maybe it was someone that he knew personally someone that knew that routine you know maybe waited for him offered him a lift offered him sweets something and that was it that's what they believe happened really because it was such a quick timeline and it was something that he'd done regular so it probably was someone local or someone that knew him really or it could have been couldn't it really when you think about it a lot of these is an opportunist you know killer or predator that's just seen him walking back but he did come down an alleyway it's a bit strange so this there was a large scale search all over you know rivers mountains forests lakes um psychics the clairvoyants were called in everyone was called in to find out information on this boy there just wasn't anything Police put posters up on milk companies, put posters up and, and on cartons. They'd done everything, really, to find this kid. Again, all his classmates were interviewed, took everything. And um, no one knew anything of this boy. Now, the strange thing was, six days after his disappearance, Philip's school bag was located by two girls in an alleyway close to his house. Now, that lane had already been searched, and there was no bag there at the time, or for a few days after that. And then all of a sudden his school bag turned up in the alleyway. That was it. There was some of his stuff in it, but a few stuff were missing, like a few books and stuff, and that were missing. And um, they knew now that someone had put that bag there way after Philip went missing. Now, that bag is still now being kept by the police in a sealed, properly sealed. It had been tested on different occasions for DNA, but as I always say, DNA advancements are getting much more, you know, um, uh, intense now. We can tell a lot of things by very minute pieces of DNA. Um, they have tested lots of DNA because there's been multiple people put forward for this and um, it hasn't been none of them and that's been proven actually because of the DNA on that bag and there would be DNA on that bag because if someone's gone through his school bag, took stuff out, of his school bag like school books I think there were some religious books taken bits like that um, their DNA would be on that bag and at this point no DNA that had been put forward of people of paedophiles and everything else in that area that's put, been put forward have ever came out with any hits not as yet there has been 400 sightings of this boy but none of these have ever been confirmed. Also, one one said that Philip was reported in Manchester in the United Kingdom after his disappearance. Also, that is uncredit. That's not credible. There was nothing that um, in that either. As I said, I don't believe that this boy's made it out of Ireland. To tell you the truth, I really don't. Um, I think, you know, Ireland, as I've said before, is there's places in Ireland where you can dispose of a body, and they may not be found for years. And um, you know, 
Uh, unfortunately, I, I do believe he's um, probably still in Ireland, and this is why the police continue to dig up different areas. But they do search, and they do take um, notice of every piece of information that comes in to this day, that they look at that new um, evidence that comes in. If someone says something or has done something, you know, a tip comes in, they look. This, this case is so thorough, they're not leaving any stone unturned really and I think this is why the, the family's a bit private over doing more interviews and stuff about their child going missing um, because of all this false allegations these allegations that keep coming out you know it's a difficult thing isn't it to be told that your son not just disappeared but he's probably dead and then you have all these people coming forward but it could be this paedophile and listen it could be right it could have been but so then all this continues coming at this family it's very difficult isn't it that they are trying to deal with this grief of their family, of their, their son, because they know he's not coming back after all this year, so they know that. But they still want to know what, what, went, what happened, but it's, it's, your hopes are being put up every time these are coming forward and the police are searching, they think, right, you know, we're going to find something out here now. And it just doesn't happen. Now, I think his father died in um, 2014, another case isn't it where we have parents now passing over before they find out what's happened to their missing children all i can say if you know anything about philip's case credible right credible evidence that you feel is important to this case and that may find him or give any any idea of what happened to this child it would be really really great if you could come forward with any information you have and I'll put the information up there for you to um, look at. This case is a sad case, it really is you know, 1986, this boy just went missing, that was it, came home from school to get a bit of lunch, went back to school or on his way back to school, was taken, abducted and to this day has never been seen again. Shocking really, isn't it? Shocking. So anyway, you know what to do. Thumbs up if you found this case interesting. You can subscribe. You can um, hit the bell button. You can hit the like button. It would be very appreciated if you do that. I would like it so much. But more importantly, what I would like is that you share and talk about this case. Look at the pictures. Research them yourself if you'd like. But try and get it out there about these kids. Because this kid deserves to come home doesn't he his family is still waiting and i wrote a thing on a and i the reason i wrote the thumbnail with what the mother said on it is because she waited for this boy to come home left the landing light on or the hallway light on for this lad she expected this boy at some point to walk in that door and he never did he never did and that's a heartache isn't it and the heart-wrenching photos of the mum and dad that I've used. I, I have used one of them photos because I want to make it quite clear that this, when a child like this goes missing without a trace, this is what people end up with, this heart, broken hearted. I think that when people are waiting for a child who's missing to come home, they are waiting, aren't they, for that knock on the door or that turn of a key or you know some of these people never move on they never move house they never do anything because they want this child to know they're still there waiting and over the years as people pass on like Philip's dad has now passed on without knowing what has happened it's really heartbreaking so I really think if you really know anything about this case it would be greatly appreciated if you say it so again, thank you for watching.